It's powerful, it's compelling, but it's wrong. You need to have a pastor who can preach. And when I say preach, I do not mean someone who can hold your attention or who can entertain. I mean someone by preaching who can also teach. The role of a pastor is pastor teacher, shepherd teacher. That is what Ephesians 4.11 is. It's not five-fold ministry. It is a four-fold ministry or four-fold office. And the last office that Paul states that is given is the role of a pastor teacher or shepherd teacher. That part should be pretty clear. Now, I won't argue that point, but if you've got a pastor who cannot teach also in accordance with what Paul says in 1 Timothy 3, and we'll look at that in just a little bit, well, then you should not have that person as a pastor. You have the ability, you have the legs, the feet to move away. We have this pastor. His name is Tim Timberlake. I think his wife's name is Jen or Jenny, something like that. They are co-pastors of Celebration Church in somewhere in Florida. Now, he's making this statement, obviously, because, again, his wife is a co-pastor, which is unbiblical. And let's listen to what he says. And something that he states, we're going to have to investigate because it leaves you scratching if you know your Bible. Huh, I didn't realize that was there. He makes it sound compelling, makes it sound powerful and moving. It gets people, uh, It gets the people clapping and cheering. But is it in the Bible? But then there was a prophet named Anna. Don't tell me that God cannot use and God has not called women to carry the word of God. Hear me. Not only was Jesus spoken over by his mother, but one of the first prophecies ever given to Jesus and spoken over Jesus was by a prophet named Anna who did not leave the house of God, who stayed in the house of God night and day and fasted and prayed, a minister in the house of God who spoke the word of God and prayed day and night over the things that God had spoken to her to pray over. Don't give me this stuff that God cannot speak and use women to do great and mighty things. Because if God trusted Anna to speak over his son in the house of God, who are we to say that God can't use women to speak over us? God will use mothers, God will use matriarchs, and God will use ministers to speak over you. Seems pretty compelling, seems powerful. The people are cheering, the people are into it, and it makes sense because they also have women there who are pastors. And if half or most of your congregation is full of women, well then that that hits, that connects, that makes them feel like they can be used. And again, women can be used just like men can be used, but women can't be used in any old capacity, just like all men cannot be used in any old capacity. There's a qualification process, and unfortunately, not my rules, but God's rules. We'll come to that in a second. But the rules state, the qualifications state that it must be a male. But let's go back to what he says about Anna. Let's go into the screen because he makes some statements about Anna that she prophesied over the Lord. Now, notice what he says. He states that she prophesied or spoke over Jesus. I'll probably pull that up again and let's look at that again. But let's look at the, the text. This is Luke 2, 36. And there was a prophetess. Uh, this is someone who spoke or informed or told or gave utterance or gave a revelation from God. And so, yes, women were used in that capacity. But we're speaking about a particular office, which, by the way, the church has not been given yet. And so we're not speaking about an office in the church. But let's keep that in mind also. And then we'll see how Paul or the Bible reference how women can be used or how men can be used as well in the particular office. But verse 36, and there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in age in years and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then as a widow to the age of 84. So in other words, she was married for seven years. He died. And so she stayed that way for the rest of her life. And then as a widow at the age to the age of 84, she never left the temple serving night and day with fasting and prayers. At that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. So now, let's compare what we just read, and let's compare that 
with what he said about Jesus or about Anna, what she did. Hear me. Not only was Jesus spoken over by his mother, but one of the first prophecies ever given to Jesus and spoken over Jesus was by a prophet named Anna, who did not leave the house of God. Who stayed so that part is wrong. She did not give a prophecy to Jesus. She did not speak over Jesus. Now she did, going back to the text, she did tell people uh, at that very moment, came up and began giving thanks to God and continue to speak of him, of him, not to him, to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. So she's speaking about the redemption of Jerusalem to others, not over Jesus. Don't give me this stuff that God cannot speak and use women to do great and mighty things. Because if God trusted Anna to speak over his son in the house of God, who are we to say that God can't use women to speak over us? God if God chose a woman to speak over his son, well, that's a lie. That's incorrect. Now, I don't want to say it's a lie. It's incorrect. Now, it's a lie if it's intentional. And I don't know if it's intentional. It could be that he's just simply untaught, that he's ignorant of the scripture. Now, Paul, I'm sorry, Peter brings this up about things that Paul says as well. He says also, in, as in his letters, speaking in, in them of things in which are some things hard to understand, but understand hard to understand to who? which the untaught and unstable distort. So he's either untaught or unstable because he is clearly distorting it as they do also the rest of the scripture. So they also distort the rest of the scripture, which is exactly what he is doing. So what did Paul say? First of all, let's deal with him for a second. This particular pastor of this church, the qualifications are that he must be able to teach. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. That also says that he must be the husband of one woman. Uh, and so that naturally means that he must be a male, not a female. So when you come in and distort the scriptures, by the way, these aren't that difficult. These aren't hard lessons. Now, they might be hard in terms of receiving, but not hard to understand. We don't think that most of Paul's writings are hard to understand, but maybe hard to, to receive. That might be what, he, what he's speaking of, but he must be able to teach. Well, clearly, if you're going to miss, if you're going to miss what he's saying, that this person must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, you miss that and you spin that around. Now, I don't know how he has spun that around. Oftentimes folks will spin it to say that, well, that was that culture for that time. Well, then why would you read the rest of the Bible? Because a lot of what we're reading is for that culture at that time. But how we apply it, how the teacher, the preacher should teach to be taught. That's a big, important issue. And he must be able to teach. Clearly, he's not because he's distorting something that is not that difficult to understand. He's saying Anna did things that aren't there. There is not that many passages about Anna for you to be that confused. But so I can only assume, giving him the benefit of the doubt that he had, that he's educated or at least sounds it or at least has the ability to read. He can read the text. And so to take it that to that, that particular level, to twist it means it to me, it has to be, I can only assume, intentional. The benefit of doubt is that it's not intentional and that he's just ignorant. But I, I, I'll give him more credit to say he's not ignorant, that it's just his heart or his, uh, maybe it's an understanding. I don't know. I can't speak to that. So I'll leave that alone. But when you want to bring up these particular women who want to teach the Bible, Jesus speaks about this in Revelation. He says, but I have this against you that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and she teaches and leads bond service, my bond service astray. This is what's happening. You've got people who love the Lord, who are saved, who are listening to these people who will lead them not astray, not away from Christ, but in terms of understanding true sound doctrine. Paul makes it clear. He says, I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain silent. Not that she can't say anything, but in terms of leading in the service or uh, having authority over a man, teaching over a man, but you say, no, that's different. No one says that women can't be used, but if you're going to twist the scriptures to make allowances so that women can be used in ways that the Bible does not allow for, that's a person that needs to be avoided. That is a person who we need to discount. There's a reason why you see people that'll just say anything. Why? Because they simply cannot preach. And when I say can't preach, not hold your attention. I mean, they cannot give the scriptures proclaim the gospel the correct way. If you cannot proclaim, which is where we get the word preach when Paul says in 2 Timothy 4 to preach the, preach the word, we are to 
preach the word, proclaim the word, not your own word. And so if you're going to proclaim someone else's word, you are not preaching according to the text. And therefore, you are not qualified to be a pastor, to be a teacher. But we've got folks that keep listening. If your pastor would do something like this or the person that you listen to would do something like this, that's a person that you need to leave alone. This is not a difficult text to understand. And there should be no way that you can twist the scriptures just so that you can put someone in a position that the Bible never intended them to be in. So whether this particular person, pastor, preacher, won't um, learn from this, won't stop doing that, don't know, probably will not. But you don't have to listen to any preacher who does that because again, God will deal with you or us or whomever if you tolerate these sorts of things. Amen.